So turbidites are a really interesting example of how we can use spaces to understand um, sedimentary processes and deposits. So uh, turbidites are rocks, the ite uh, is the rock part of it, and they are often um, deposited on top of mudstone and ideally in an ideal turbo turbidite the base of the sandy part of the turbidite is often an erosional surface. So it might have some topography on it um, uh, relative to the mudstone. Then the bottom of the turbidite can have some pebbles, sometimes even uh, ripped up bits of mudstone. You remember uh, from the Holstrom diagram, consolidated mud uh, uh, is very difficult to erode, but it can actually be pulled up into uh, pebbles. Okay. And then, uh, so you have pebbles and coarse sand, and generally, as you go upward in the turbidite, the grain size decreases. So we would say it's fining upward. And this lower part usually doesn't have any sedimentary structures in it at all. Okay? So we'd call it massive. And then it gets to a point where there's very strong planar lamination. In the zone here. It's still composed of sand. You usually lose the pebbles at the base as it finds upward. Here. So you end up with the planar lamination, and then as you further up, you start getting ripple cross lamination. So those are my uh, erosional bounding surfaces for the cross lamination here. And these are the cross lamina themselves. And I should specify that these are current ripples. They, so they're showing flow in this direction, the way I drew them here. And sometimes you can even get the crest of the ripple preserved. Sometimes you don't. I'll draw draw some in here. We'll say that one gets eroded off. And then the grain size is still decreasing. All right, so it's decreasing all the way up here. And then you tend to get some fine sand and planar lamination again. But it's not as well defined planar lamination. And this end here. And then you start getting uh, the fine the sand size gets fine enough that it consists of silt. And again the silt has a faint uh, planar lamination. So the grain size here would be uh, very fine sand and then silt sized grains. Right. So silt, the symbol for silt is this dot dash pattern. But it's hard to show both that and the planar lamination. And then there's a gradation uh, back up into a mudstone at the top. So I'm going to add faint to this other planar lamination. This planar lamination, the lower part here, is uh, very strongly developed. Okay, so we can use two of the concepts that we've been working with in class 
to understand the flow and the variations in flow speed that might cause um, a turbinate, right? So the two things that we, we can see are we have a decrease in grain size upward and upward is through time because we have the older on the bottom younger on top and then the second thing that we see is the sequence of sedimentary structures um, we have ripple lamination and planar lamination in these two areas and a consistent interpretation with our change in grain size would be that this is an up, upper planar lamination and as it's slowing down you start developing uh, ripples on top. So the, the sequence of uh, sedimentary structures are consistent with a decrease in flow speed through time. So I'll use U there, we're down to that. Okay. So we talked about this, and then we have uh, this mudstone that's accumulating as well. And we know from the Holstrom diagram that the flow speed has to be incredibly low for uh, mud-sized grains to accumulate. So we can actually add a third point that the flow between sandstones is very low uh, to get that mudstone. watching.